two. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our first episode of First Mover. This whole show is about real estate, commercial, uh, your home, which would be more on the personal side. We'll find out what's going on when it comes to selling, buying, where the investment opportunities are. This is a weekly show. Nathaniel Getzel is the co-host of this show. Nathaniel looks at what's going on in the real estate market around, not just the United States, but we talk about what's going on in the world. Nathaniel, uh, Nathaniel is a registered real estate agent. One of the companies he works with is Compass, and that is one of his properties in his background, I believe, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. We Where just is closed that? this one, actually. Where That's, is it? Um, that one's in West Hills. Where's West Hills? Uh, just, it's next to Woodland Hills, just up the street from Calabasas. All right. So what we want to do is we, we created a schedule on a format of the show. The very first beginning of it is a lot of information that Nathaniel has kind of scoured over that he's going to share with us. And also some things you can do to fix your home up so it's ready to be sold and things you need to pay attention to when you go off and buy something in the res a residential space. Be aware because you know what, sometimes uh, there may have been a hole there and someone put a little toothpaste to cover up that hole. You might want to check to see if there are termites there. We'll, we'll dive into all that. But Nathaniel, how do you want to start today's show? You want to go through the stuff that you have? Yeah, let's start with that stuff. So can you do us a favor real quick, Nathaniel? Sure. Tell us a little about you. Sure. Um, well, I've been, I've had a real estate license for about 11 years. I've been building my business and my team. Um, I've been uh, investing for almost 20 years. So uh, when I started college is when I started investing in real estate. Um, within the first three years of my business, uh, I built up into the top 1% of, of agents because I did everything completely wrong or different than I was told to. Um, and I built everything using social media specifically Facebook at the time, because you need a lot of time and not a lot of money back then. Um, and it was from an education standpoint, my background before that I've taught in every level of school actually, uh, other than first through fifth grade and all the way to colleges, high, uh, preschool administrator. So everything has been through the eyes of how can I help and how can I help through education and educating my clients to make their lives better, whether it be through building wealth or bring the homes that they love or increasing their, their uh, improving their lifestyles. Yeah. And that's important. So, so basically changing their life for the better in some way. Yeah. You come from this from a good place, right? I'd like to think so. Yeah. I I'm going to say, okay. <laughs> well, so let's see you. if this works. I'm going to share. I'm hoping. Tell me, Mr. Getzel, what do you see? I see the first mover slide. Is it the slide by itself? That's all you see? Yes. Great. And then you see the second one now? Yep. Well, That's right. Got going. What, is, what do we have, Nathaniel? Okay. So we, what I did is I took a very, very wide view and I'm going to get more and more focused as we go. So this is basically across the nation. Um, number of sales uh, last month, uh, month over month, 20% increase in sales, still 11.3% decrease. Uh, year over year, but that's because we had a giant drop off at the beginning of uh, COVID, uh, the beginning of the stay at home order. Basically what you saw was very, 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 very few um, sales, but the prices were increasing. So the biggest thing is yeah, about this is, this four- is, This is based upon United States numbers? Yeah, these, this is the US. This is the US that we're talking about right now. Because so, I like to find a home for $295,000. Well, I could show you where, but you might not want to live there. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the, the key but thing. Let, let, my, my brother did that. So understand everyone, we are going to touch upon Los Angeles, California on this one. At times, we'll go into other parts of the United States. So focusing on California, let's go look at some of the, the stats that are going on. What do we got, Nathaniel? Go for it. Yeah, so at the, um, a couple of weeks after the beginning of the stay at home order, uh, very few sales were happening. But the interesting thing to look at is four out of every four, um, out of every four, three sellers pulled out, but only two buyers pulled out. So meaning there was still more buyers in the market than sellers, even at that time. So what you saw was 
the prices were rising even though there was very few sales happening. So make sure we're on the same slide as you're talking, okay? Yeah, that, that's- Got okay. it. Yeah. Continue on. So again, it's a, uh, just to finish the last slide, it's still projected to increase 3%, but we'll touch on that later because there's some other factors that have to do with that. Um, now what you're seeing is because of low interest rates and one of the highest affordabilities in history, uh, buyers are literally flocking to the market. I've had myself alone today, I had four people who just found me on the internet who wanna buy homes um, on top of all my regular clients. So um, the interest rates are, are greatly driving um, the buyers into the market, especially looking here. At, looking at Los Angeles, there's great opportunity because yeah, because for first time home buyers, it's probably for a lot of them, the first opportunity they really had to buy. Because the thing that that's important to, to remember for first time home buyers is it's really about the payment. It's about the payment more than anything else, right? Long term, your house is going to go up in value. You're in Los Angeles. You're, you know, you're in an A market for the most part. So long term, it's going to go up. But for first time home buyers, getting in and being able to afford the payment is the key thing. So having a huge drop in interest rates uh, makes the homes much more reachable and affordable for first time home buyers. If you look, I think it was in 1980, for every $2,800 payment right now for the same price home, it's like $1,600. So it's cheaper now than to buy a home in the 80s for a first time home buyer, ultimately because your payment's so much less. So it, it's kind of a crazy thing. Um, it, it's also a great opportunity for people who are looking to trade up because if you have equity in your home, the interest rates have dropped, which means you can now take your equity, use that like cash, buy a nicer home and have relatively the same payments, right? So your monthly stays the same. There's no, you're not coming out of pocket with real money because the money's in your house. So that's a great opportunity for a lot of people. It's also a great opportunity for uh, older people who are looking to cash out of their equity, right? buy a downsize with distinction, meaning buy a nice house, but that's smaller and more, more affordable for, uh, more fitting for their lifestyle, like a one story maybe, something smaller, less, less to maintain. 93% um, of people think they're gonna age in place, but 53%, I believe, or either 40 or 50%, uh, they actually end up having to move due to health reasons. So By the way, now I do is like a great this time. Downsizing with distinction. You like that? <laughs> downsize with distinction. That is a marketing term that just rocks. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. That's one of mine. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's a much better visual than I'm trading to a smaller house, trading yeah. down, right? You're not trading down. Nope. You're, you're doing with distinction. So, yeah, that's, yeah, that's great. All right. Thank good. Um, the biggest problem over the last seven years in Los Angeles has been low inventory, which there still is now, right? So what that means, inventory is based on if every home buyer bought every house on the market, how long it would take for all those homes to, to disappear, right? So nationally, we're at about four months. Uh, anything under six months is seen as a low supply. In Los Angeles specifically, that's actually, I, I reversed those there. Uh, in, in Los Angeles specifically, it's more like one month, not four months. So it's very, very low, which is also driving up prices. So for people who want to sell, it's a great time. And but it's not a real market then. It's very artificial. It's exaggerated in most cases. Oh, absolutely. And there's a lot of factors that are relating to it. Um, the government uh, stimulus is, is really actually propping up the market in a lot of ways right now, which uh, we're only going to see uh, what those, those real effects are later on because depending on you know how the year turns out and certain political pressures we'll see what happens because um i think we're going to talk about this later with deferment versus uh the deferment. we are going to talk about it. again this is july 22nd everyone i want to make sure we know what the are because things will change as we move forward let's oh, yes. uh, so basically but if inventory goes up the market will increase slower than it is now and there's several factors that we'll talk about later that could drive more homes in the market. Yeah, so um, yeah. Somebody, I apologize. No problem. 
back to this. So there's a lot of big differences between now and the last drop. The last drop was a housing driven recession, right? And uh, versus this, which is a crisis driven recession. And actually real estate's going to end up helping to pull us out of this recession, not driving us deeper like it did the last time. And that's largely because people have a lot of equity right now. Let, uh, let's talk about San Francisco a bit north. Yeah. This was a shocking thing that you said. First, what San Francisco is going through an interesting change, isn't it? Yeah, San Francisco is a very different climate than Los Angeles. And um, house prices are dropping dramatically there. Um, I think it's, um, oh, I know it's on this slide here, but. Um, You're looking at this right here. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So, so the, the prices are dropping uh, there dramatically quickly, actually, uh, as people do move out of the city. However, there's a caveat to that. So um, there hasn't been as many homes on the market there uh, since the last drop, which was 2010, 2011, and 50% uh, more single family homes than the last, uh, this time last year, and 130% more condominiums. Now there's a lot of condos because condos are no longer seen as a safe place to live. Why due not? To COVID. Due to COVID, because there's a lot of air transfer, there's a lot of problems. Interesting, uh, and that's so, why. So one of the things you're going to see right now in all homes across the board is a much bigger focus on clean and safe and healthy homes, right? But that's a different issue altogether. Um, but yeah, 150% more reduced price listings, 150% uh, more have reduced their prices in San Francisco. Now, really what's happening there is the very, 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 very top uh, is, is, selling like crazy in San Francisco. So the high-end homes are selling a lot. Now, what people don't understand is when people are moving out of San Francisco, they are moving out of the city, right? And the, the, but there's a lot of sales in the city as well. They're just dramatically lower prices than they were. So it's actually, San Francisco is kind of going through what's called a devaluation event where the base prices I think are gonna be lower forever. Like the, the, just the base prices are going to start lower now. Right. Now, so tell me something about sidewalks in San Francisco. Yeah. So what people are doing is they're, they're, they still want to live near San Francisco, but they're moving to suburban areas outside of San Francisco where they can still access, you know, some of the lifestyle, but they don't want to live in there because a lot of weird things are going on. Like they're making sidewalks wider to accommodate more homeless. Right. Who wants to live on that street? Right? I know, but when you say, hey, there's a mass exodus myth, really? With well, that, like here's that? where the myth is. The myth is that they're moving out of state and far away. They're really, they are moving out of San Francisco, but they're moving to suburbs. They're Got moving it. to different types of neighborhoods, but not different states necessarily. Yeah, they're going more towards East Bay, right? They're going to Fremont. They're going over to uh, Fremont, that, Sacramento, yeah. even Lake Tahoe. Lake Tahoe, which has traditionally been a much lower priced area because it's more of a vacation um, community. Well, now people okay. are going, hey. That's also, I mean, that's also Nevada. Well, but there's a California side. Got it. There's two sides to that. And what a lot of people are doing are going, well, I want to live at Lake Tahoe. I'm going to get paid the same as I was. I don't have to go into my office. I'm going to go there for a while. See how that is. Yeah. Right. And you know, that is actually a market that's very hard hit right now because of all the second and third homes and, and the uh, Airbnbs and rental properties that are, that are suffering. And that's something we should ask. I'm just wondering guys inside the chat, who uh, is looking at moving out of the state they're in? So the state you're in, just put in the chat, I'm gonna say to me, yes to me, I'm thinking about leaving California. So I'm saying yes, inside the chat, if you're thinking about staying or leaving, just say no or yes. Uh, Aaron's saying yes. I'd like to know, uh, there's no from Darius. Phoenix, you're moving to Phoenix or staying in Phoenix? I don't know what that means, Stephen. Um, more no's, no's, not yet, not yet. Moving, Stephen is, oh, moving to Phoenix. Uh, yes, in a few years, you're waiting for your kids. Let's go to Stephen real quick. Stephen, I wanna pop you on, Stephen Fox. So Stephen, uh, where do you live now? I live in West LA. You live in West LA, and why Phoenix? 
Um, I went to college there. I've got friends there. My girlfriend's got family there. But why are you moving? Uh, why? I want, um, <laughs> I want to buy a house. Oh, because it's unaffordable here. I want to buy a house. I, 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 I drive around and visually I see homeless people constantly. Um, I think people are rude on the streets. I'm getting honked at all the time. My girlfriend called me 10 minutes ago. She just watched a, a snatch and grab out of a per woman's car. I mean, this is, I mean, this is an everyday, it's one thing or another in this area. And yeah, my, my girlfriend who's been here since, you know, maybe 15 years, because I don't feel safe in my own town. Right. And, and, and you know, we, we just don't feel safe. I'm not going to go for a couple of years because I've got to transition my business over there. And I've got a 16 year old that I'm not going to leave. So, um, but it's going to be, you know, we're looking to, in fact, I'm talking to somebody right now about making an offer on a condo in Scottsdale. Wow. That's amazing. So what, right now I'm going to go to the thing. Thank you very much, Stephen. I appreciate that. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so when you start to see something like this, Nathaniel, are you hearing this from other people too, Nathaniel? Yeah. So what you're seeing is it's, it's a mix of things. Like some people, um, they're moving further out of the city. Like I have, I have a lot of people who, were moving, who were living in like Encino, Sherman Oaks, and they want to move out to stay in the same state, but move out to maybe Camarillo, Agora, uh, Santa Barbara, things like that, where there's less homeless, it's a little quieter, nicer, and like places like Agora and things like that cost a little less than West LA, but have great weather. So it's still, you know, not a problem. Um, what you're seeing is there's still a lot of people moving into the state as well, and it's it's becoming, um, it's, it's more expensive, right? And I think the state long-term is gonna become more expensive, especially in Los Angeles, because the people that are moving in are still driving prices up. And a lot of wealthier people still wanna live here. And I think uh, that those neighborhoods just become more encased as the dichotomy in increases, kind of like um, Hidden Hills, for example. The whole city's gated with armed guards around it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I sit here and I look at the essence of this town really started a lot from the content and the energy industries, because we have a lot of the power companies that are here, a lot of the, uh, in the military, or, or let's call them uh, logistics companies, okay, because of uh, what's over by the corridor over by LAX. Right. So if you look at those things, the music, the movie content industry is in a flux right now. Okay, mm -hmm. we know that. We know that the energy industry is in a flux right now, and we know the rocket logistics industry is in a flux. So if those were the main drivers here, what keeps you here? It has to be something. Now, to me, the mountains, the ocean, the clean air, believe it or not, since it is clean now. That's right. But can you justify 13.5% taxes, potentially going up to 15? William Quigley says up to possibly 20%. Mm -hmm. Is that worth staying for? And I don't know the answer. And I have a hard time with that. Well, you know, if you're an entrepreneur and a, a business owner, there are lots of ways to adjust taxes. Um, there's lots of strategies around that. So for metal guys specifically, I feel like we have a lot more options than people who are, you know, W-2, right? Um, I mean, a lot of it is economic, right? So Stephen, I bet if you could afford a beautiful house in the neighborhood you want within an hour of where you are, you wouldn't be thinking about moving to out of state. Is that right? Um, <laughs> probably yes, yeah. If my, I guess if my business, I guess if my businesses allowed me to afford it, I'd probably be focusing less on leaving Mm -hmm. and make that my consciousness because I have more money I can stay and it's not money's not an issue any longer that's correct yeah but you just brought something up earlier it had nothing to do with money it was about but, yeah that's true yeah it's well I mean like what you said Ken you said hey I like going mountain biking I like going hiking I like I like that stuff I you know I got my window open and I got a cool breeze yep you know and you know, it's, it's, that's difficult. I like being outside, you know, you can't be outside in Phoenix right now. It's no, you hot. can't. 
Right. You know, what, what keeps me here is my friends hanging out with my friends. I can't do that now for at least a year. And it's right. almost like the next year to me is like, it's a buffet. You know, and I, most of us don't want to go off and eat at a buffet unless we're at a nice, you know, four star restaurant or hotel. We'll try the buffet. Right now we're in a buffet time. Why not try different places? You know, pop around. Let's see what's out there. Let's, let's buffet it. Maybe it's me thinking that way. Hey, well, I mean, uh, so as far as the buffet goes, right? Um, if you're going to buy in a buffet, you have to really understand the market, right? So LA... I didn't say buy. I said live. I, I, know, I know, right. So what I'm saying is you can go and live wherever you want, but maybe you still buy here because you know the equity build is going to be good and you have... Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Investment properties. Now... Without a doubt. Like, Stephen, have you considered like a Westlake Village or an Agora or a Camarillo? Would that be fitting your lifestyle? Because I think one of the things that keeps people here, not only your friends and all that, but your right. lifestyle, right? Yeah. The lifestyle um, here. I mean, if you look at most of the country, half the year you have to stay inside because it's snowing. Or in uh, Phoenix, it's too hot to go outside because you'll melt. Yeah, I, you know, that's, that's a, you know, I have a girlfriend now who has family in Phoenix and she's in the medical business. And so she's got her own set of problems. She's dealing with wearing mask all day right. and her family's primarily there. And I have friends there and, you know, it's, you know, it's not, you know, no decisions you have a, ever. You have a lifestyle perfect. opportunity out there is what you're saying, Stephen. You have a, yeah, there's a lifestyle there. And during the winter, it's beautiful. And I get mountains and I get trails and, but, I, uh, but know, I, I get a lot of the same things. I think the issue is this, and it goes right to this. If you had money, you would have a property here, and that property would accrue interest, and you could live somewhere else if you so choose. You're just not at that point. And I think of many of us. I'm going to go to Gary Cowich. Gary, you, now on the other hand, you have properties in different areas. You have also have properties, I think, in Phoenix, don't you? I do have a property in Phoenix, yeah, commercial. Commercial property in Phoenix. You have a residential property here in Los Angeles. Yep. But, and I have commercial property up in the Bay Area, too. And if you so choose, are, are you looking at leaving or staying? Or would you say, hey, I keep what I have as residential, as an investment property, and move somewhere else? What's your plan? Um, I'm going to stay for now. I mean, um, I have a unique situation. Um, a lot of my income is tax-free, which is nice. So I still have a fair amount that, that's taxable. So California hikes um, their state taxes. Depends how much, um, but again, uh, um, I'm kind of um, mitigated by, by the non-taxable income. Right, which makes sense, of course. But that right there allows you to say, hey, I could still live here without. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, I, I wanna take a little bit of issue with one thing Nathaniel said about us metal guys having businesses, not being W-2. Um, if you have capital gains or if you have passive uh, income from real estate investments, it's really hard to write stuff off against that um, legitimately. Well, right. capital, I mean, there, there are ways to do it though, right? Um, depending on what the specific situation is, like I have people that specialize in that sort of stuff. So like, for example, capital gains, you 1031 it, and you can change that not just into owning other property. You could do it to REITs. You could do it to um, all kinds of real estate investments. Uh, so there, there's lots of ways around that sort of stuff. Um, as far as passive income, there are a lot of strategies. I have a lot of clients that have um, strategies. I, that work Nathaniel, I think here's the deal. Uh, moving yeah. forward on the show, anytime you bring something up, let's be very specific. Instead of the word a lot, let's be very right. specific, okay? Correct. Like, okay. This is our first show. This is a test. This is your, our beta. So enjoy beta with us. We're beta testing this. Uh, but Gary, you're right. I, I can understand. Capital gains is a bitch. And- yeah. Especially and I've done, I've done a 1031. So Nathaniel, right. I am well versed in that. I'm talking more right. like Absolutely. capital gains from stock sales and things like mm -hmm. that, not, not necessarily real estate. But I'd love to chat with you offline uh, for some strategies on some, you know, because much of my taxable income is, is commercial real estate investment income. Yeah, I'd love to. to I'm not actively, you, you know, I can't really write off against it. because. Uh, understand, our, our function okay. of this weekly show is not to sell your property or buy your property it's for us to all come together and throw ideas out that's the whole premise of this show we're not buying or selling maybe in the future we create some type of collaboration where we go after investment vehicles and opportunities but not yet 
Hey, Adam, let's go to Adam. Uh, you are unmuted because you Yes, are... yes I'm unmuted now. God, that background, please either change it or change it. All right. Here's the thing. Adam, you have an amazing view. Like if you just turn to your left. I know. Well, well actually, I'm, I, 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 I'm in a different room from the room where I have to be. I get it, now, but Adam, now people, I, I just want to tell you, phone, Adam's house is one of the most unique homes in all of Los Angeles. If you are driving on the 405 right there by the Galleria and you look at the gigantic hill, Adam's house overlooks it. You have one of the coolest homes in Los Angeles, the views. Thank you. Yeah, I do have great and views. And that's the room you show us. No, I know. And I don't show any of the views here. Next time, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll take my laptop out. And I'll yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, you know. let's appreciate that. Adam, you got a lot going on. What do you want to talk about? What do you pick? Pulling out. Actually, 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 just a just a piece of advice here. Well, my my family's in the um, real estate business, commercial real estate. So I, I actually know it well up in the uh, up in the Bay Area. I also have a real estate broker's license too. Um, a lot of people don't know that. But um, just did a refi on my house, conforming loan, um, two point three seven five A APR. And there were no fees at all, no appraisal, nothing. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, two point three seven five. What, what, Fifteen what, what years. Was it before? Fifteen year fix. Fifteen what year before? fix. What's that? What was it before? What did you refi from? Uh, it, it, well, I had just done it ten months ago at two point eight seven five, um, and uh, they were able to like not tack on anything to the loan, nothing. They just they, they just literally locked half a point off. That's amazing. That yeah, really it's really, really. I mean, this is a great time for loans. No, but you, again, I've been here. You've been a fixture of Los Angeles for 20 plus years. Yeah. Um, you've seen a big change in the, the, the environment here. Are you going to keep that as an investment property or are you thinking about living somewhere else? You know, I'm in a situation where, I mean, I love it here. I mean, I absolutely, all my friends are here. I love it here. But if I were in a situation where I had a major capital gain that I knew was coming up, um, I would preemptively go out to probably Vegas or Reno um, and I would uh, live out there and I, you know, just, I, I would just, I, I would just keep this house as a place to go back to. But if, if I had a really big, big one coming up, there's no way I'm paying 13%. Yeah. You would do a 180, 179 split, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like a, like a Turpin did back then. Back, yeah, back in a the lot day, of guys. Really I know good. a lot of guys that do this. You know, they want 180 days somewhere else. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm looking at Florida specifically for that. Uh, yeah. Because uh, tax free, it's important. It really is. Yeah, you just don't want to be in Florida during the summertime. No, that's when you travel to other cool locations. Exactly. Exactly. Well, come on, you know, think of it like your mistress. That's what Florida is. Okay. No, wait, the other way around. That's your wife. You travel during the hot. No, I don't know. Hey. Okay. So Nathaniel. I yeah. wanted to touch upon a couple other quick things before we bring on one of our, our speakers today. And Absolutely. that is something that you look into all the time are how to fix things up. And this is important. So Nathaniel, when you go, this whole thing of, what's it called? Um, showrooming, is that what it is? What's it called when people are fixing their homes up to make sure they're, they're, they're getting ready to be sold properly? What's the oh, term like called? Staging them, staging. You're staging them, right? Yeah. And, and you're noticing that this is really the hidden secret of getting a home to be sold is by staging, oh, right? Absolutely. It's so a night and day difference. In fact, the house that you have a picture of back here, um, it was not staged. I showed it to 20 people, no offers, uh, staged it, sold it to the next person that saw it. Really? Yeah. It and and it's because, yeah, it was that fast and that big a difference. And it's because... Most people have no imagination. They can't picture what it would look like with stuff in it. Now you don't want personal stuff, but you want pretty stuff. So let me see if I can bring this up and we'll talk a little about some of those, because these were good when you sent them to me. I like these a lot. Uh, again, tell me what you see. What do you see? Um, I see a pile of dirt. I see a half dead lawn. I see big closed off spaces, um, ugly color, probably a dark house. That's what I'm thinking. 
So right That's now, awesome right. And by the way, I noticed something that I don't like right away. And that is there's no window. Window. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's so, going to be a real dark house. So this right here was a pretty big, it looks like this is a big fix me up then. Yeah. And yet, if you notice, it's, it's not that serious big changes. Like obviously they got rid of that ugly garage door and put a window on it. Um, and actually, if you look at those, uh, the stone, the stack stone, that is one of the things that has the largest ROI of anything else. Uh, they're, they're, it's very inexpensive to do. And the way they only did it about halfway up the first story, very inexpensive, but it really picks up the way that whole level yeah, of the house moving feels. Moving that garage over to the side had to cost a fortune. You're moving a garage door. It's not, it's not that. I like how you make it sound like it's nothing. You're just, you know what? You're getting a nose job. That's a nose yeah. job. And uh, yeah. Actually, the cost of those windows is going to be probably more than the cost of moving that door. Got it. Okay, so this house here went up in value substantially just because of the modification. Absolutely. And look how it's presented. I mean, do you want to sell a big pile of dirt? No, you got and it. Even, even, the, even the little subtle things, they cut the, the trees back off of it. You know, there's no weird, ugly trees in front of it anymore. Okay. Let's even go inside. Little... Let's look inside this. Yeah. This would look like my... my parents house on the inside from the 70s right right yeah. what do you got going here that you you're yeah. not a big fan of i don't like the dark wood the old bricks that the that carpeting that lovely carpeting is phenomenal um that door has got to go as well it's like a, it looks like an old contractor's door um the, the wood on the wall very dated very dated look some people love wood but even if you love wood this is not the look all right, here's the modification. <laughs> it's like a now a new house. It's like a new room. Yeah, yeah. You see, they did the they opened up that whole wall with those disappearing doors, lightened up the floor with hardwood. Um, you don't even see really the bricks. That just disappears. The ceiling, now that it's white, the wood kind of disappears and looks like a beautiful feature of a vaulted ceiling versus, you know, a dark kind of overhanging gross thing. They got rid of the swinger hot tub. Damn it. Yeah, that's that's the bummer part. But yeah. But you can see it looks like there was a guest house added in the back too. Yeah, there's a, a lot's happened over in this this part of the world. Yeah. Uh, and, and that starfish totally enhances resale value. Okay. Well, that starfish is the key to its sell. Let's yeah. go to this. We see a lot of these where I'm from the Midwest, this type of house. Mm -hmm. it's cute. I the, the, it's cute, but the first thing I see is an ugly green, uh, lots of old bricks. I see bushes. You're not selling bushes. You're selling a house. Um, a lot of the colors are kind of missy matchy. Mm, it feels old to me. It feels old and like it's one of those houses. You, it's a creek house. You walk in and it starts creaking. Yep. You know, it's everything's a, creaking. A creek house. Yeah, it's a creek house. What? This doesn't even look like it's the same house. Yet it is. You see, you could see that the points, right? They took the second point out, made it a dome, opened up that walkway so it's much more inviting. Nathaniel, why would I want to sell my house after I did all this to my house? Well, maybe you want the money. The <laughs> upside, because you're probably, if you think about it, you know, you figure you put in 50 grand and you get out 150. Well, you can use that 150 on the house you really wanted in the first place. You really think this is only a 50 grand modification, the stairway? I'm just using that as a, as a number, like <laughs> a, an example number. You know, this, this is more of a, I'm not a contractor. I, I deal with- We have a contractor on with us in a moment and we'll ask them what they think yeah. it is. Yeah, let's curious, I this one and try to take a guess of what do you think the modifications of this would have been? So remember that one. Okay, let's go to this. Hello, me when I was 25. <laughs> well, I love the bags of garbage and that dirty kind of, you can tell that carpet smells bad. I think this is Jeffrey Dahmer's place. This is what it <laughs> looked like before <laughs> they arrested him. You'd be amazed how many wealthy celebrities I walk into their house and this is it. No. Oh, but, oh and there could be some, uh, there's definitely, Either dog or cat urine on that on that rug somewhere. All right, this one is not hard to fix. What? But it's a big see the, these little differences. 
completely change how you feel about that house, right? Oh yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> of course. And it's basically just flooring, paint, and lighting. I'm just saying, I could see a lot done with Adam's place with all those uh, <laughs> those file cabinets. I'm just looking at one and the other. Adam, take note of this, okay? Those file cabinets, they have aged. It's so okay. funny because his background, like his real background would look like a fake background. It's so pretty. It would be. This is our last one. What do we got here, Nathaniel? I see a lot of trees. Yeah. Um, a lot of trees. Um, it's a lot of dark colors, old, dirty roof. Uh, looks like the whole house is a mess. You know, it, it's it's a house that that's gonna have a, a bad smell to it. <laughs> yeah, I guarantee you, there's a bad smell in that house right now. All right, uh, all right. Um, we've all been okay, in it. I get it. Um, I guess it went from good to better, right? It went good to better. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, the the second one would sell. The first one, you gotta hide. <laughs> you gotta hide. You yeah. know the first one, they are ready with their guns to shoot you if you come on their property on the top That's one, right? right? That's right. They might have put a uh, dug something under the house somewhere. On, I'm the very first curious one. about on the second one, what is that brick outline on the brick wall? What is going on there? Oh, that's that's beautiful styling. Oh, is it? Okay. Oh yeah. It's probably in the first one too, but you can't see it because it's just lost in the red. Yeah, I think we should have used this as the first before and after photo and then gradually worked our way to the other ones. I think we, this is the worst of all of them. Well, you know, but there's something that's important to look at, which look at the front door, right? The front door has one of the largest ROIs. Uh, the front door, the garage door, and that stack stone, those are three very inexpensive things that greatly Im improve the, the curb appeal and sales price of your house. Doors are important. Doors are very, they're the first and last thing you see when you enter and exit the house. So it, it well, not just that I have a bathroom door. Story. When I, when I got into this place, I didn't like the bathroom door in my studio. And I had a door from Italy built just to fix the bathroom. And everyone says, I love that door. So that door is noticed constantly. Absolutely. Doors so are big. Since we are talking about general contracting and building, um, somebody that you've uh, been hanging out a lot with is Darius Gandhi. Oh yeah, this guy is so cool. You like Darius? I do. Yeah, Darius. Let's, is... let's unmute Darius. Dar Darius has been a a friend of mine since I, Darius. How many years ago do you think it goes back? Maybe twenty five. Twenty five, yeah, twenty five years, yeah. Twenty twenty five years in the nineties. Yeah. yeah, in the nineties, yeah. When we were uh, even before we were doing that coogies. You remember yeah, coogies? The the metal. Yeah, it's going back. So Darius, so. let's talk about uh, first, any suggestions on how much some of those modifications of those homes would have cost? You know, it, it depends where because of the labor cost. Um, I'll, I'll give you a quick uh, indication of what's happened in, in LA in the past year. So after, um, after they had initiated the, uh, the government had had initiated the uh, removal of a uh, document that had created a, what, can you hear me? Yeah, Darius, can you hear me? Internet, internet's not being friendly. Okay, how about now? Can, can you turn off Twitch and Fortnite? Can you just turn those yeah, off? Yeah, I don't have anything on, I don't have anything on. Okay, okay, let's try it again. All right, okay, how about now? LA said what? No, after, um, so what happened in, in, is it good now or no? Yep, yep, a little better. Okay. Uh, or I could just do it from my phone. Um, I'm on my iPad. But um, what happened was after um, ICE, the immigration control had um, taken a lot of the, taken a lot of the um, undocumented workers, the price per daily worker had gone down. Oh. Oh, this isn't good. No, it's not working. Darius. I like how Richard. Yep. Okay, hold on. Let me. You going to call back in? <laughs> Richard Burke says, I hear Grinder uses lots of bandwidth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. You know, it's you know, fascinating to see 
what it takes to build something in times of crisis. Like we have a friend of ours, um, um, a friend of metal who has literally taken how many years to do his home? Five years. Five years. How long has Darius been working on this home? Oh, I think just a few months. A few months. Comparably about the same type of project level, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Same project I mean, level. Might have, Darius might have taken a year. Might have taken a year. Right, but there is a lot more infrastructure necessary for Darius's home when it came to. So Darius uh, ended up buying, and hopefully he'll talk about it, this beautiful place in Ventura. It sits on top of a mountain. It yep. sits on top of a mountain, and he built this. He lives in Marina del Rey. He drives all the way up to Ventura on a regular basis and built this insane home, which is on the market. Hopefully he'll be able to show a picture of it. Darius, when you well, pop Remember, off. Ken, that's also, it's, it's, a, it's a fort. What he built is a fort. It's, it's behind three different, ooh, Adam, great view. Adam! There it is. Let, let's there see you what you got, Adam. Are you on your computer or on your phone? No, phone. Can you just show us the view from, just walk outside or are we gonna lose you in the minute you go outside? Hang on, um, I, will, I will try, so. Okay. So let's see. Look at this view that Adam has. So understand, Adam, how old are you? Uh, 58. Adam is 58. This home lassoes girls that are 28. So you know it must be a killer home for him to get girls that are 30 years younger than him without a problem. It's literally one of the best views. <laughs> it's, it's an amazing it property. It ain't his George Clooney looks that bring him in the women. Right? <laughs> it's not. Thanks. Thanks, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Because, you know, if you were suave, like, uh, who, who's a Mr. Suave in our group, right? It's all the looks. My dad always says, you know what attracts younger women? Lots of money. And then my dad goes, I'm very attractive. <laughs> <laughs> I think Gary with the camera attracts a lot of women. <laughs> Gary, yeah, there you go. So, oh, Darius, do we get Darius back? Not yet. You know, what, if you, um, I wanted to, while we're waiting for Darius, I wanted to respond to something that Adam said, unless you, you wanted to. Uh, no, go for it. Okay. So Adam, I, I see you said that New York City is in much worse shape than California because at least California has the weather and New York is high crime and can't take advantage of good weather. But it's not just that. There's also a lot more vertical living, right? And they literally have buildings, You're right. Right, buildings You're right. that are just considered not safe anymore. Right? Totally agree. So, totally so agree. That's, that's a huge problem. And while LA, we have so many different kinds of neighborhoods, right? I mean, you could easily move to Agora, you could move to Marina del Rey, you could be at the beach, you could be in the mountains, you could live however you'd like. You could be in, in urban, you could be in rural, all within really 40 minutes of each other, right? New York doesn't really have that. You either have the city or you're out of the city. And the city right now is a mess and it is a death spiral because so many values are going down there. Now, well, we, yeah, no, I mean, totally, 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 totally true. I have a, I have a brother who, who lives there, who literally is moving out. Um, and then my sister who actually lives in Greenwich, Connecticut said home prices in Greenwich are going way up. A lot of people are moving out of the city and moving into the suburbs yeah. for exactly the reason that you actually mentioned. Yeah, Jim, Jim Quick just went from a penthouse in downtown Manhattan to a nine bedroom home in Connecticut for around the same price. Yep, because and you're gonna see more of that as a lot of these companies realize they don't wanna go back into their office spaces, which is something else. That's a whole nother issue we'll get to, but uh, that's what's driving down a lot of these uh, commercial prices. I mean, the first month of the stay at home order uh, commercial prices had already dropped 25%. And they've gone down from there as more companies realize, hey, we can save on um, costs. We can pay them the same. We can just close our offices and let them work from wherever they want. We have happier employees who stay forever. Makes sense. Let's go to Darius. We brought Darius back on. Hey, Darius. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah. So, so to answer your question about the cost, um, it varies from region to region uh, or state to state. In California, we were affected quite heavily because of um, after the government had um, enforced ICE, the immigration control, 
um, it depleted our, our workforce by over 50, 60%. So what happened was um, a daily rate for a framer or um, just one of your general guys would be around 165, 180 a day, jumped all the way up to 250 because the cream of the crop actually were not there. They, they went to other places. So for example, if a, a builder was building in um, Beverly Hills and they have a 27, 20, whatever, 15, $20 million house, they bumped the market for the daily rate and said, okay, we'll pay you $300. I just need you to come 300 a day and I'll cash you every day. So when you had a loss of your top guys, um, due to immigration, and then and then the second loss of your top guys going to these houses, Beverly Hills, and uh, where these developers can pay so much more, um, that created a really huge shortage of skilled laborers. Right. Um, so that that's kind of where we're at. So the cost really is different, and and the trades are really different too. So for example, a cement guy, guys that just do cement, command three hundred dollars a day cash so they want to get cashed out on a daily basis um and those are some of the some of the top line guys um a good framer would be around 225 now a day used to be 160 um and a finisher someone who does finishing work those guys are in in around the 250 uh dollar range as well so the costs have gone up and then not only that but but the material costs have gone up because of the um embargoes that we had with china so uh, rebar went from being, you know, uh, 10 bucks all the way up to 15. So um, costs have just gone up through the roof. Well, so the home that you built in Ventura, which do you have yeah. a picture of it or something that we could see? Or you want, uh, to, you want me to go to a website or something I could bring up? I mean, yeah, you could go to YouTube. Um, tell me, it's, tell me, tell um, me to just type in one one zero nine. Wait, hey, let me get you. Wait, wait, go in there. Yeah, uh, one zero nine. Buckskin, B U C K, S K I N. Got it. And I got, um, it. I got it. It should let be me, there. Yeah. Let me, let me let me give everybody a little sample of what this is. And you know, this is when you're looking at this, remember it's a triple gated fortress on thirty one acres. So that's just just to give you an idea. And the first gate is <laughs> gated with armed guards. So and there's two more gates before you get to this great property. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn the sound off. Can you guys see that? So and then this, outside of being a fortress, it's also a, has amazing views. So Darius, what did you do here? Yeah, so um, when I bought the property, the house, um, the foundation was already created um, and the, the skeleton was already there. Um, it was made out of wood. Um, I ripped everything down to the foundation and built everything out of steel uh, because we're in a high fire season and, and that's really right by uh, the mountains. Um, I felt that for me to be able to sleep at night um, was to build it out of one of the most stronger, stronger materials in wood, right? Um, that was number one. And number two, a lot of people don't, don't consider, but they um, when they're in the process of buying a house and if it's in a high fire zone, you have to prove to the insurance company that that house is viable that can stick through any type of fire. So by showing the insurance company that this is built out of steel is able for the, for the buyer to um, clear their insurance. Wow. So, Did you yeah. have your own separate road going up to this? Yeah, the road is one quarter of a mile. Oh, jeez. Yeah, so just own... it's huge fire uh, your own water uh, water system to this uh yeah so um so well we we had to basically it was like sim city um when you're building on a mountain uh you have to bring all of your own mechanicals uh you have to bring your own water you have to bring your own gas line your electrical line your internet line um so it was literally building your own city within a city um and not only that but we didn't go septic uh, we actually tapped into the sewer line um, and that required, uh, and I had to be a little bit more creative. So one of my friends actually works at Arco and they have a lot of drilling equipment. So we were able to sneak some of the drilling equipment out over the weekends and on holidays and drill and then bring it back. So yeah, it was pretty crazy. So give us an idea. You bought the property for what? 
seven hundred and twenty thousand dollars wow and yeah well that that's what you think oh it's a steal uh which it was um for you know 31 plus acres but uh just <clears throat> just to do everything in fact uh, we we got to a point where we uh we were completely done i actually finished the house a year and a half ago and when we were going for our final certificates uh when you go through your final certification you have to go through uh, the fire department, you have to go through building and safety and all this different and they everyone comes and they check up check everything off. So everyone came and checked everything off, except for the fire fire marshal who came said, Where's your fire hydrant? And I said, Well, what do you mean fire hydrant? We have no permits for fire hydrants. Or anything. I know you don't have a permit for it because there's no need for one, but I want you to have one. <sighs> and, and so we had to put our own fire hydrant and he would not sign us off. So that delayed us in another two years. Um, so yeah, it was, it was pretty intense because I had to rip up the road again. I had to rip up all the mechanicals, rip up all the, the, um, the gas line, the electrical line, the water line, and then build and then tap into the city and then find a contractor that knew how to um, do um, uh, fire hydrants. So, so Nathaniel, yeah. Nathaniel, this property has a <coughs> curb appeal because it's right next to LA County, but it's not. That's, <clears throat> that's right. It's in, a, it's in an area called Bell Canyon, which is a completely gated area. <laughs> that's totally. guard gated. Totally. And the, the gates are actually in LA, but once you get behind the guard gate, <clears throat> you're in Ventura County. Does that change anything when it comes to property taxes or? Yeah, you have um, lower property taxes. You have different city services. You have different school systems. Um, in fact, you have different police. It's a private gated area with its own security, but it also is um, patrolled by the sheriffs who have to drive down the 118 and into <laughs> LA and down for about 15 minutes out of Ventura County to get to the front gate to then drive into Ventura County. You didn't sell it that well with that. <laughs> yeah, that was <laughs> well, no, I mean, uh, it, it does, you don't really worry about it because it's a gated completely gated, you know, exclusive community. I get it. Um, so it's, so what, but you what, have lower taxes and uh, great city services, actually. So what kind of uh, just and terror cool. stories do you have, Darius, of building this thing? Besides what you just shared with us, what were some unexpected that just kind of threw a curve? I mean, everything that could be unexpected was unexpected. Um, so, for example, Edison, when you're bringing in the, the line, um, I brought in a five-inch conduit. Um, and what, what we did was we built a conduit from the street all the way up to, uh, up to the house and did everything as per Edison specs. And then again, some hotshots uh, supervisor inspector comes along and says, I don't want five inches, I want six inches. And I'm like, no, we can't. And then you get stalled and then you have to get, get your engineer involved. And, you know, so it, it, you kind of wonder, it's like, okay, do I just leave envelopes with, uh, and drop it down and tell them to pick it up. I, I, I don't know, but I didn't go that route. Um, and um, it's just, it, it was tough. It was really, really tough, but that's just the nature of the beast um, on how it works with, uh, with big projects. Smaller projects, they go for it fairly easy. The rule of thumb would be how much more than you're estimating, whatever you're estimating, how much more is it gonna be? Triple. Triple, yeah. Triple, not even 20%, yeah. you're saying? No. No, triple, triple. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I felt that I could build the entire, rebuild the entire house and have everything done for about a million and a half. And that's with high end quality products. I mean, we're talking uh, imported tile from Italy and stuff of that sort. Um, because at that time, my labor costs were very low. Um, you know, everything was low. And then pre, um, pre ice, you can, you can get the cream of the crop. Post ice, it's really tough. Interesting. So, what would you have done differently? Uh, what I would have done differently, probably not buy the property. I mean, if I had to go back and, and do it all over again because of all of the crazy things. But am I proud of it? Yeah. Did I learn? Oh, my God. Probably one of the most craziest things I've ever done. Now, can I build on, on, a, on a mountain? Yeah, easy. I mean, I know exactly. I mean, so, so um, you know, it's just building on a mountain without your mechanicals. And when I mean mechanicals, that means you're gas line, electrical line, water line, um, internet line. Um, it's a, it would have been 10 times more easier had all of the mechanicals been there, especially the sewer line. 
that was really tough. So well, Nathaniel, when you look at that property, because you've been up there, right? What if you're selling that property? What mm -hmm. would you tell someone that makes this property so unique? What would get you excited about it? Well, actually, there's a lot of things, but first thing is Bell Canyon, which is the community it's in, is notoriously difficult to build in. It is so on top of all the the challenges that Darius had, it's also somewhere that is extremely hard to build in. So building there is more rare and that actually drives up the value of the prices because brand new homes there don't come up very often mm. right so if i was so that's something that's really important to understand so it's also when you're going to build it's important to know what you're getting into and where you're building like uh, hidden hills they also have a lot of issues a lot of these little gated kind of super communities have a lot of specific added complications to building um, but that actually makes it more exclusive and, and more valuable. Uh, this, I mean, it's a triple gated fortress on 31 acres with endless views that you feel like you're in your own world up there. <laughs> and it's, you know, the, the, the house, you, what you can't get out of that video is the house has so much volume to it. You walk in it's like, it's a one story, but it's soaring ceilings and these huge open spaces and everything opens to beautiful natural views. I mean, it's, it's an amazing place really. But building in Bell Canyon is extremely difficult, even for a normal house. So there is with, with a house the, like that. Yeah. With everything Nathaniel you said about inventory being low, are you getting a lot of fights, or are you a little above on price range where you're not attracting as much of an audience? No, I, I priced it higher than what the comps are because the comps don't. There's no such thing as a 31 acre house in Bell Canyon. We're the largest landowner there, yeah, so you, you didn't price it above the comps. You don't think so? No, you didn't price it above the comps. <laughs> You're setting the market because- I'm setting the market, so that's it's right. A, it's a unique property, so you can't look at it yeah. from comps. It's exactly, a that's, that's exactly right. And, and so that's, look at it like, that's the way I'm looking at it. Yeah, you have to look at it like the super houses that they just built in Hidden Hills down the way, right? The one that sold for $30 million on right. acres, right? Or eight acres. It's more, those are the comps, if you will, but there's right. nothing like this house. When you say the comps, what do you mean by that? So comps means comparable property. So when normally, when you're traditionally pricing a house, you look at other houses that are similar square footage, similar views, similar um, size, similar bedroom, bathroom count, similar neighborhood within a, a close area. So comparable properties. But, okay. And that's usually how you would price a house, right? But with a house like this, these unique properties, you can't use comps because there's nothing like it. Okay. Uh, Bell Canyon is already a, how, a, a community of, unique homes that have Daniel, quite a large range. So what I want to do for next week, mm -hmm. I want us to pick an international location, somewhere mm -hmm. that most people wouldn't think of, you know, maybe somewhere around the Baltic Sea, I don't know. And let's talk about international properties and how they do things differently. For example, they don't have loans like we do here. There's no traditional okay. things like that. It's very different. And you guys, if you have suggestions or ideas, please email them to myself or to Nathaniel, and we'll bring it up every Wednesday on The First Mover. This is all around uh, your residential commercial properties, open dialogue, open conversation. Of course, we want to thank Darius for being here, and Nathaniel, thank you for getting the show going. My pleasure. Thanks for awesome. everyone for coming. Hopefully, it was uh, helpful. It was. Thanks cool. a lot, everybody. All um, right, thank you. Thank you. Today, today we have, um, if you're interested, today um, 